Our live coverage of the extreme weather is free for all readers. Please consider supporting our journalism with a subscription. Save login, register or subscribe to save articles for later. Normal text size larger text size very large text size it is possible to love a city so much that it hurts. Lismore sits in the middle of eye-popping vistas of almost luminous green hills, softened by a subtropical languor. A sideways glimpse at its surrounding valleys, mountain ranges and morning mists catches your breath every time. Yet, with a funeral march regularity, this city exacts a terrible price for this beguiling beauty, its big floods sweep away lives. Lismore residents rally as the city is inundated by flood water. Elise Derwin most years, Lismore floods. Nuisance value floods, really, just part of the everyday ebb and flow of its residents' lives. Each deluge adds to local folklore, a source of resilient pride, where wild yarns and curling photos of waterlogged ancestors intermingle, the lives of others inside timber and iron homes, scarred by terracotta-stained flood marks. Floods were my Lismore childhood. An overdeveloped color picture exists somewhere of my brothers and me, wearing our stubbies shorts and t-shirts on the outside landing of our two-story house. Three or four steps below our feet, laps the peak of the 1974 flood. My dad, all five foot six inches of him, would swim and then wade out every day with a bucket full of nappies to get them washed and return with a clean batch for our newborn sister. It seemed exciting at the time. This February 2022 flood is different, it is desolation. Our former family home would have been completely submerged, and I wonder about the safety of its new occupants. Lismore Mayor Steve Creek says the disaster, a record 14.37 metres, 2 metres above the 1954 and 1974 levels, will change the city forever. It has to change to survive, he says. This was our cyclone Tracy, Krieg says. This wasn't a big flood event, this was a demolition. An aerial view of the devastation around St. Carthage's Cathedral and Trinity Catholic College Lismore. Four people are confirmed, thousands made homeless and untold damage wrought to houses, schools, businesses, and cultural institutions. The water tore through Lismore Square, a purpose-built raised shopping mall, designed to be flood-proof. St. Carthage's Cathedral, built more than 100 years ago on a hill site chosen by Catholic Bishop Doyle, supposedly out of the reach of the floods, was swamped. If neither God's house nor mammon is safe anymore, many residents are asking for the first time, can Lismore survive? The flooding disasters on the northern rivers, southeast Queensland and north of Sydney have prompted the federal government's disaster recovery agency boss Shane Stone to call for an end to floodplain development saying inundated homes should not be rebuilt as insurers brace for one of the biggest flood claim events in Australian history. Australians need to have an honest conversation about where and how people build homes. The taxpayer and the ratepayer cannot continue to pick up the bill for these huge, catastrophic damage events, Stone says. With more extreme weather events predicted by climate change experts coupled with the extent of the latest disaster, the future of Lismore is looming as a test of federal and state governments resolve to determine how and where Australians live in the future, and who will pay for the huge costs involved with any transition plan put forward. How did Lismore get into this situation? The layout of Lismore gives away its history. It began as a point of activity, a place to cut down precious cedar timber and farm dairy and beef cattle. A town based around the highest navigable port for cargo-carrying vessels on the north arm of the Richmond River, now called the Wilsons River, a transport route that only died off in the middle of the 20th century. The Booker's family home is a write-off after it was almost fully submerged by water in the Lismore floods. Rachel Booker it was this port juncture, where Wilsons River is joined by Leicester Creek, and floods usually occur when the creek or river is at record levels. The town took root around its river origins, growing outwards in fits and starts, governed by the whims of pastoralists and the surrounding valleys. When the railways and then automobiles first arrived they tended to stick initially to the flatter sections of the flood-prone valleys, 
avoiding costly tunneling through hills and ranges. Residential housing, for a long time, was similarly compliant. Today Lismore is a regional city, literally straddling two worlds. Half of its nearly 30,000 residents, most of its business, industry, and civic buildings, and cultural institutions remain wedded to the historic river valley floor, 10 meters above sea level. The other half sit atop a plateau 130 meters to 170 meters above sea level, east of the central business district, across two suburbs, Lismore Heights and Ganelaba. Water laps shop awnings at the height of the Lismore flood on March 12, 1974. 29 big floods, 9.9 meters or higher, have swamped downtown Lismore since 1870. Ron Hepburn devoted a large part of his professional life trying to mitigate flood risks in Lismore and Bellina. As the chairman for 12 years of the Richmond River County Council, a body set up to manage flooding issues in the water catchment, he advocated and initiated the plan to construct the present CBD flood levee, which was completed in 2005. This was a stance that cost him his position on the Lismore City Council after a public backlash over his suggested height and cost. Now aged 80, Hepburn questions, perhaps surprisingly given his predilection for engineering solutions, whether Lismore should remain wedded to its downtown home. Former Richmond River County Council Chairman Ron Hepburn initiated the plan to construct the present CBD flood levee. If we don't do something, it will die, he says after the latest disaster. I'm not just talking about the cleanup operations, but the damage to the city's reputation, land values, business confidence, house prices and many more unseen and long-term issues. Now, I am no hydrological engineer, but having lived 60 years in Lismore, suggests to me that neither millions of dollars nor hundreds of millions of dollars spent on capital works will provide anything but band-aid measures. However, this isn't for local council to resolve, this will require federal and state government intervention. Yanel Safin, the state member for Lismore, wants a reconstruction commission set up to rebuild Lismore, similar to what followed the leveling of Darwin by Cyclone Tracy. Lismore Mayor Steve Krieg had his home and business destroyed by the worst flood to hit Lismore since record-keeping started in 1870. Elise Derwin that original commission's mandate was to reconstruct Darwin within five years. In fact, it achieved this in a little more than three years. In time, some good would come out of the experience of Cyclone Tracy. The main benefit was the introduction of greatly improved building standards that would apply across the entire country. These included requirements that buildings be clad to protect them against flying debris, and that their roofs be tied to the foundations. Safin remains committed to downtown Lismore. Her home is on the Wilsons River. She had left her home on the weekend to stay with a friend on higher ground. When the flood inundated that house too, she and her two friends were forced to swim for their lives. In downtown Lismore on Friday, Mayor Krieg was picking through the wreckage of his business, La Baraka Espresso Bar and Trattoria. Krieg and his wife Julianne leased the cafe building and the attached house, where they are raising three kids. Two adult children live and work away from home.